Uh, my father bought it. 72 years? 70, 72, yeah. And it's a 69? Yeah. We're going to go over and check it out. And he's had it pretty much like one family owner, I guess, except for the first couple years. And it's been sitting here. I think the sticker on it is last registered in 98. And it's pretty complete, but it's been sitting outdoors. So we're going to go dig it out, get some of the stuff out of our way, and load it onto my flatbed trailer. And we're going to go bring it back to the shop, see if we could resurrect it and or see what happened to it from sitting. Without further ado, let's get her on the trailer. You'll get up there. Hey guys, and how's it going? I did some filming of gathering this machine from its location where it was, but it's really windy, so I'm not quite sure what you did or did not hear, or even if I showed any of it. So a quick backstory, it's a 1967 uh, Ski-Doo, I think it's 10 and a half horsepower, and it was last registered in 1998, which is roughly, what, 25, 26 years ago? And it's been sitting outdoors ever since. So our hope is to, uh, resuscitate it, bring it back to life, hopefully, um, or at least just the engine come back to life because I have another project that's kind of unique that can use this engine. But either way, we'll have some fun with it and see what we can figure out um, what has happened to it <laughs> over those many years. So it is, I guess in 67, they made like three different levels of it, like 165 cc, a 250 cc, and I think a 350. This is the one in the middle, which I think was called an Olympic. And what you can see, this one's just a, a mimpic. <laughs> um, I was driving home, the seat, I looked in the rearview mirror, blew off. I pulled over and I grabbed the foam off of it. Again, I don't think it was any great loss because it was uh, not much of any kind of condition anyway. There's a tag that's on it. It does look pretty complete, the key's even in it. So that stuff looks pretty good. Let's see if we can um, flip the hood up. Well, that's the headlight. <laughs> I thought it was a latch for the hood. Let's see if we can find some little, a lot of times it's like little rubber tie downs on the side that hold it. I'm gonna take a better look at the engine part of it. I'm gonna go pop you in the stand. Well, I guess it's already gonna be fun because I don't think that lifts up. I think it's kind of down there without unbolting it. I see bolts kind of running around the outside perimeter of it there. So we're gonna have to work our best to kind of go see what we can do from here. Fortunately, the carburetor is facing at us. I don't know about the clutch setup though, and the belts and all. Let's go grab a light, take a peek in there. We should probably blow it out. Um, let's get up in the air too. We gotta take a look and see what condition the, the track is in. Yeah, we got some light. So that's gonna make a little chain guard that's inside there. Those clutches have to be able to move in and out. That's a spring-loaded CVT style transmission this one at an idle this is the way it sits and as it speeds you speed the engine up these two halves get closer together and the two on the back side get further apart that belt changes sides sides changes size and uh, that's how the transmission shifts itself it looks like we're probably gonna have to get in there so that cover may or may not <laughs> be coming off what else we got Let's go see about what's in that glove box. Hang in here. 21 mix on the, we got a pull rope. Fire rush. Probably in case you break the rope on the trail. Looks like a tune-up kit of sorts. Anything else cool in there? A bunch of these. What are they used for? Were they old matches that the heads rotted off? I think so. And a screwdriver. And another screwdriver. All right, let's go get it up in the air and we'll take a peek at what's going on. Looks like there's a, a nest in there. Muffler looks complete. Hmm. 
This was sitting on, actually held up pretty good. A little piece of like, I don't know if we're going to call it luggage or maybe you put your helmet in or something. Smells pretty right, but it doesn't look like it's all rotted out. The frame inside is aluminum. It definitely smells like <laughs> leather that's been sitting in a swamp. Like I said, the seat was gone that blew off on us. I guess it would have had a piece of wood as a base and that is totally gone. And it's lifted up to see what the track looks like. off the ground yeah, let's go see it was sitting flat on the trailer although it was not a trailer actually I don't see oh it's definitely got cracks in it huh yeah around right there edge there should be blown out chances are these turn that one's good Probably the lowest one to the ground there. A little growly, but they turn. Nice. Let's um take a little bit of time. Let's go clean some of the crap off of it. We'll have a better idea what we got going on. I think I see a hole in the pan right here. Yeah, so let's go scrape off all the crap that's on it. Probably be better for our health, too. <laughs> I'll take a shot back. We'll, we'll clean out all that. And I'll bring you back. I think somebody might have... Is that cylinder head look painted to you? It's just the way the aluminum curves. I must have a cable that... I don't know if that's a brake. Maybe that's a brake lever. It stops the belt from turning. Where's that go? Yeah, it goes to here. The other side is the throttle. The backer's got a tail light in it, it's got a wire going to it, but I don't think all the wood is just totally disintegrated. There's that. <laughs> it's got a ground wire. I'll we'll figure a hot wire on this side. Let's see if I get them disconnected. It's got a disconnect in the front here. For that side. And the ground. The only weird thing we're saving out of that is the lens. Let's keep cleaning the rest of it. Not too bad. I think it's just that one rot hole right there. Well, unfortunately, I left my shop back at the house. So we got to do the next best thing is really make a mess in the garage. I think the chances are the track will move. So you can rotate that a little bit if it will. Let's see if that'll move for us. Oh yeah. 
Awesome. Just rotate the junk. <laughs> it definitely has been in one spot for a long time because it doesn't, it keeps wanting to spring back. Stick my finger in the hole. Go blow out again now it's rotated some. At least it moved though, that's a good sign. It means none of the bearings and stuff are seized up. That didn't make a mess at all. I gotta take a few minutes, I gotta sweep up. The shop back wouldn't have got, it probably would have got like, you know, 50% of it anyway. We still had to blow it out, but. Uh, that's a bit of a mess. No mice. Like it never happened. All right, let's get the uh, spark plug out of it. And we'll dribble a little bit of oil down the cylinder. And uh, give it a couple of yanks over. See what we can get. Kind of go from there. It's plug tight. That's good. The water got in. That's one big ass spark plug. This thing came with this socket. Yeah. Definitely from a different era. Let's see if we can get a little bit of oil. Any coming out? Got a primer. There we go. Let's go give her a slow pull. <laughs> pull start makes a weird noise, huh? Let me back you up so you can see what's going on. Not going back in right now. It's going in on its own. Yeah, take it. Take it like you want it. Yeah, that'll be coming apart. Maybe sooner than later, huh? Um, I like to be able to see if we can do a compression. Actually, you know what? Also, spark, too. I would think that. Let's go see if we got spark. Um, because that's going to be under this cover, also. I would think it's. 69, I would say it's probably got points. It may just be a magneto. I don't know. Uh, let's go throw the, kill the lights, throw the plug back in. We'll let this slowly <laughs> fix itself. We'll give that a yank and see if we got spark. So we're going to need a key. He doesn't turn. Is that the right key? I'm going to shoot some oil down inside that too, so we can get that to free up. I don't know if it's in the on position or not. Something tells me that's uh... Yeah, we get some oil down inside that. It's all the things that you think are going to work. Kind of take, take for granted. <laughs> it's just... Fluid film. Let's dry hump it a little. <laughs> I think it's a key, but I don't think it's a key for it, maybe. I have a feeling you would think the key would kind of like say something. Look at that close, maybe not. Yeah, I don't think so. Either that or somebody replaced that with like a um, a lawn tractor ignition. Yeah, so we're not going to get spark until we get that figured out. Let's, um, I'm going to take the uh, outer edge of it off. Let's go grab some pipe. We'll spin that off. We'll get the ignition down and take a peek at it. Yeah, so I'm definitely not giving the ignition any hope, but I found the plug that goes into the engine, which is this one right here. If it works how I think it would work, I think if we unplug it, 
it will just make the coil not ground out. That is a guess again on my part. So I'm going to work on getting this plug off of it and then we'll throw the spark plug back in and give her a yank and see if we get any spark. If not, we're going to you know, start getting this cover off and take a peek inside and you know figure it out from there. But I'm giving about a 70% a chance we're going to have to open it up. All right, what do you think? Yes or no? I'm going to say no. That way, if it's yes, I'll be excited. <laughs> no, I'm not disappointed. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> Let's uh, get one more. It may be another combination. A lot of times, like I said, what they do is they, they ground out a wire. Is how it works. Yeah, we're not seeing nothing. All right, we're going in. At some point, it might be better off. Um, I think this engine just kind of sitting on there with four bolts. We could back it up. Better than trying to take that. I was looking into the, how many bolts are on the cowl. Forget it. It's got like 30 of them. And every one of them is like you know, rusted rotten. They're all like that going across. But they go all the way around the outside edge. So I don't think that's a, a great idea. Let's um, get the carb uh, air cleaner box, air box out of the way. See what you have in there for a for a setup. Looks like a couple of three A's. Looks like the whole studs pulled out. <laughs> was living in there. <laughs> this, is, this is where we're going to find the mouse. Oh, yeah. That's the air box. It's just packed. Well, it's a good thing. Maybe we can try starting. I don't think we heard anything, but still. That definitely has some critters in it. All right, so what we guys going to get that cover off? I, I don't know, again, if we could even do it with it in place. I don't see we got screws going this way, but the problem is I think there's probably any ones in the front that do the same. Mm -hmm. I see the base plate that it's on. It looks like it's just got four, four motor mounts. Let's go take a peek at the other side, see if there's any, um, you don't have a light over here. Yes, yeah, so I think they're all going to be coming from that side going around. I think for our own, um, sanity <laughs> and uh, ease of work let's see if we can get the well, probably just yeah, it looks like it's ready to fall off anyway this is one of those carbs with the uh, diaphragms in it so that it can run I felt it just broke off it can run either any direction that's going to be dealt with yeah let's go um hopefully it does it's just hopefully it's not a reach underneath I hope it's not a nut and bolt. Let's go throw a wrench on one of them see if it, the whole stud turns. See what we get. Looks like it's turning. There are jam nuts on top, so they're already kind of meant to be tight. I'm going to go spray them down real quick, though, with a bunch of fluid, and maybe we can uh, impact them off. Let's look at the one in the front. Somebody already has it, like, halfway up. Can you get it on an angle? <laughs> now I know why that front one's halfway up. I'll try to run it back down again. Let's go shoot some uh, fluid under it. Might have to heat them up. was easy. <laughs> Be quick. Right. 
Well, the four bolts are out and the belt is off. I was able to tilt the motor forward and get it, but we have an exhaust system to deal with. I'm not thinking that that's going to come apart <laughs> all that gracefully. I wonder if we should actually even just take maybe like a whiz wheel and cut the clamp. I'm not sure which one's going to be a better one to come apart. It actually kind of looks like maybe that one come out of there easier. Can we, um, like, does it go through? How far is it up in the hole? <laughs> Stop it. And yeah, maybe we'd be better off trying to screw with that lower one. I don't think we can, I can't even see where it goes into the cylinder head as far as like I'm bolting the muffler and leaving the muffler behind. I may take a mirror, but I really don't want to, yeah. I, my fear is that we're going to, because we can't see it, we're going to break the studs off. It's right there. Hmm. I wonder if that flex pipe has enough movement to, nah. I'm going to, uh, you can actually put a socket on that one. Looks like a half inch or seven sixteenths. I'll do that. See if we can get that clamp to loosen up. See if we can just wiggle that pipe right out of there. We should be able to get the rest of it off. I don't think anything else is connected. We got a, uh, a wire. That's not a problem. And then this going through the center of the base. We're more than likely going to replace all this anyway. So I just cut that now. got a square drive on the back of it. You better go ahead and just get in there with a whiz wheel cut that nut right off. Let's go grab... <laughs> Let's just go grab the pipe and see if the pipe will just come right out. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes it plays the cheat. All right, good. Let's um, take a wiggle of the engine out. We'll just cut that fuel line off of there. I'm not worried about that. Watch gas come pissing out. That might... <laughs> uh, let me go grab a pair of needle nose vice grips just in case. So we can pinch it off. Not like that's ever happened to me before. Let's go see. Something. Yeah. We're fine. Come out. Oh, we got a we got a throttle cable yet. Jump in the gun. I mean, you could have said something. Left me hanging like that. And we got the bracket up top to get actually kill the hole. And all things beat anyway. Let's rip it right out. Anything else I'm forgetting? You let me suffer. There's like a fixed foot pedal. Gotta get the exhaust over. Come on! You can do it! see the back of it you want to see sure you do tiny huh yeah yeah we're definitely never going to get to those screws that's for sure so our wires are going in there this is what is this oh this is going back to the tail light oh so yeah one two three four five six and of course that one's under this bracket right can we get us no Bet you not. See if we can get a screwdriver under there to get that one out. Figures. Who designed that? Sounds a little shitty. <laughs> 
There's always a reason why something could have been parked too, you know. Yeah. Crank may have a little bit of play in it. Alright, let's um yeah, see what we can get for screws out of there. We might be able to get like vice grips on the side of the one that's down there that's stuck. But let's see how these respond. Aluminum and steel. It never goes wrong, right? <laughs> they always come right out. Let's start with one that's easy access. That one. Yeah, that's good. It's gonna get cocky though. Let's go for that. Let's see if we can get that hard one. Now can we, uh, well, it's gonna be tight. <laughs> it's gonna be tight and it's gonna strip it out. That kind of sucks. I think, right, do we get it? I think if we get like a little thin screwdriver now, we might be able to get in there. Yeah, man. Watch, watch it able, able to come out, but it hits the bracket. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised that um, they moved it all. For play. Good. All right, I'm gonna go knock out hopefully those other ones not have much of an issue. Shush. And we'll try to get the uh, front cover off of it. We have to get that muffler completely out of our way but let's go see. I don't know how far that cover has to come straight out. Um, it might even rotate. Yeah. I've, it kind of looks like it's got dowel pins in. I see like a little, um, on the other side, right next to where we took that screw out. It seemed like there's possibly like a roll pin or something in it. Right. Let's, um. Suck up there's one in the middle underneath. Let's go uh take a peek. No. Okay. Yeah, this is what I was talking about right there. Kind of looks like it has a roll pin in it. Let's um see if we can get that muffler off of there. I think it's gonna have to kind of come off anyway. My feeling is probably full of mice and crap, and we'll have to go shake it out. Let's um we may just go right for heat on them. I don't think um, that's going to stand a chance for uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> What's your opinion? <laughs> just give a quick tug on it just to see. But no. I wouldn't take this screw out, get these wires out of our way. I still notice this getting soft and changing color. <laughs> getting uh, residual heat from it. I think there's a little screw right there, clipping it all together. All right, 
There we go. I'm going to work with some heat and try to get them to crack loose. I think I'm pissing off the local spiders that are coming out running. Oh, there you go. There we go. One. Hopefully the other one does just... Uh, that one's going to suck to get in there though. We can't get an impact gun on it. I'll get it. Yeah, we definitely weren't going to get that while the engine was still in. And we got one more bracket down below. Let's go give um, that a impact. Maybe. Actually, is that half? Yeah. You see that one? Make sure it's all the way on. I don't know, maybe you can get kind of, you can find a little opening in it somewhere. Well, I'm going to get a longer screw too and like thread it in and then tap on the base of the screw. I mean, Austria, so I think it's probably, would it be metric? I would think so, right? Hmm. Hey, just give us a little bit of an edge somewhere. <laughs> Take a, just a little corner somewhere we can let's um get like a um a scraper or something we'll try to catch it right on the edge a little bit we'll give her a couple of taps is that an edge we can pull apart let's go uh pick at it a little bit with a hammer <laughs> yeah i still think it's got guide pins on it but let's go see if it'll do anything Yeah, it's got them. Goes the spider running. I think those pins are bound up on it. I don't think they're coming out. That's gonna suck. Again, steel on aluminum is what the issue is. Now look at them right there. I, the, the top is you know springing away. Might be able to run like a putty knife. We'll keep working on trying to get it open. What we'll do is we'll run a putty knife down to that location. I don't think taking the pull start off is going to gain us anything other than the pull start.
That's one of them anyway. Let's um. I'm gonna go work on the other side. Yeah, it's definitely bound right up on that. Off to the other side. <laughs> yeah, good that we took that off. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go take a, a second, go clean up some of the uh, crap that is inside there, the mouse nest that got in there. And then we have to get further into that flywheel. Hopefully it doesn't have any kind of fancy setup to get that out of there. Sometimes it, they have like a weird puller. All right, let me go clean some of this crap up, literally. Well, he's just not having a good day really disturbed his uh, beauty sleep. I am gone, I say. Jumps on the lens. So I said we could get a socket up inside of the bar. I don't know if it's gonna be left-hand thread or right-hand thread. Sometimes they're opposite, so they don't loosen up. I don't know if uh, taking these out will do anything for us. We might be better off even probably leaving that on there. Give us if this hub stays on here, we might be able to need it for like to put a puller against. Problem is it's all aluminum and we don't want to bust that off. All right, let's go uh, start with the center. It's got a taper to it. I don't know if um, there's like a plastic cover in between. Usually you can kind of put like a little bit of pressure on it and you give it a whack in the center. I don't know if that's going to work out very well for us on this though. That's our choice. We got that or we could try putting a puller on this aluminum flange on the outside. Neither one of those sound like a great idea to me. <laughs> um, so we get the nuts started to protect the threads. And maybe we could put like a some kind of pressure between the outer lip and here. And um, it's one of those things I need three hands though. I need to be able to hold like a brass rod in the center, hit it with a hammer, and um, put pressure on the side. So if one of you would take care of one of those for me. I wonder if maybe we can take like an air hammer with like a, a hammer head on it and put pressure on it. Usually it takes a, a one good shot though. That was about with that fit. Yeah, that should stay in there too. Let's give that a quick shot first, a little bit of pressure on it. Another thing too, maybe we could take those screws out from that fan is and we could bolt something to it for a puller. Let's try it one more time. shove like two bolts down in here to, and I can maybe push against it with my side and, and hold that and give it a hit. We're just losing too much energy. Makes sense. A little more. Back up.
Thought we had it. I just slipped off the roll pin. Hmm. I may try an air hammer, but uh, starting to run out of uh, options. We got it. Yeah, <laughs> we broke it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, got points in there. We have. Some kind of trigger. I hope that's for the points. Definitely a lot of rust. I don't see any broken magnets. That's a good sign. Let's go take a peek inside and see what we got going on. More mouse nest. And I would say definitely that uh, <laughs> rust came out of the centers of those. So. What is this? I wonder if this is like a, so that's the cam. So that, hmm, I'm trying to figure out how the, the two of those work together. How the points work with that. Yeah, if we got some cleaning to do, we can probably clean the points. But I've never seen that before. You would think that it would lock itself onto the fly, um, the crankshaft. I've never seen it where it's, um, look how whatever this is, huh? My guess is, is it's in advance. So as it spins faster, this moves out, that moves out, that turns this and advances and retards it. That's what it's doing. Probably gonna be a little bit of a bitch to get back on there and know that you got it on the right spot. Hmm, how would you? I guess maybe what we can do is we could take the rest of. Maybe we could take the rest of the flywheel off and we'll be able to see through the little windows that are in there. And we built, yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah, that's my, that's my guess. We gotta take that off. Get in there. All the water that sat in there forever. Yeah, she definitely needs some cleaning. Those points we're not gonna do what they needed to do. Hopefully the coil's okay. So one of them, you guys got, yeah, <laughs> they were done. We're out of focus, hold on. Come on. They are very, um, credit over they were gonna no matter what they were gonna have to go come apart so one of those is for the points and the uh, power and energy uh, for spark for the coil and another one is going to be like a charging system which is going to be um, for the lights that are on it so my guess is that one's for the lights and I think this one's for the coil because I see the uh, condenser wire running down to this one and it looks like on the other side of the points it's running down to, to that one all right, I'm gonna go do some cleaning and I guess we got to take this further apart anyway go figure so we should be able to spin that cam really uh, to the see where the points that's open closed open you definitely see some rust on the can too we need to call clean up the gap looks decent these points are like 16 thou, 20 thou in between there. I'm going to go grab a points file. We'll go clean those surfaces up. They definitely need it. Yeah, I got some contact cleaner. To give her a blast. My little wet. Got a little file there. I'm 
probably going to go take a test light. And what we'll do is we'll rotate it. We'll see if we get like an on off signal. Let's go close that gap up a little bit. See a little more tooth on it right there. And we should be able to take like um, an ohm meter across and just see like the signal work and not work. It's going to be kind of a pain in the ass if we put this all back together again. And uh, it doesn't do what we want it to do. Let's go see if we got a shiny surface on that. I think we got it. I'm going to look a little bit closer on that. I got to get some lube down on. We get this right off of here. If I take the key out, right, we can get it out. Yeah, let's get that. I'm gonna get the key out, get that off. I'm gonna go take because this is the cam that opens a point, closes the points, and it's all cruddy. That's gonna burn up the little tab that's on those points if we try running it. Let's go get that out of there, and it should come right out. Yeah, sometimes they come apart easy, sometimes not. Let's go try wire cutters, side cutters. Sometimes they work. goes. All right. All right. Pull this off. Yeah, see all that crap that's on there? That would burn up that tab really quickly. I'll go hit that on the wire wheel and hopefully we don't have too much like rotten pitting on it. A little bit. Not too much we're going to be able to do about that, though. Let's go put a light coating of grease on that. Anything else we want to do in there? Yeah, I'll clean some. I'll clean a bunch of this up with the cleaner. Blow out all this crap in that's in here, too. Let's go give that cam a little bit of greasy wetness. You don't want to go much, you don't want to fling it around, you know, but just enough where it doesn't go dry. Sometimes you'll even hear it. You'll hear like a, a small engine or a car with points in it and make a chirping sound. That chirping sound is the points <laughs> rubbing on that little cam. So this doesn't really matter which way it goes on because, well, it matters a little bit which way it goes on, <laughs> but the um, flywheel is going to determine where that's located. So I'm just going to go check my point gap again, make sure I got a, just by eye, and it's actually looking pretty good. I'm going to leave that well enough alone, and I probably should get a, let's probably test it. Uh, see if we got an on-off signal. So hopefully that lighting is just about right where you can see. I didn't disconnect the coil and or capacitor that's in there. And they will definitely affect the readings because essentially you're just going across one of the windings during when it's open. So right now the points are open. It's got like 1.7 ohms and it closes. Should go down to really pretty much zero. Zero and then the open the points back up again. It'll count up a little bit just because of the, the capacitor that is in there, but it seems like it's functioning like it should. Uh, under a load, it could definitely still do something a little different, but it does seem like it's functioning. A lot of times you take the wire off and uh, you get directly across the points, but good enough for now. I say that now, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go see about, I'm gonna try to get the cover somehow off of this. I don't know if it's the inner or the outer that holds it so that we can have access to that, these little windows because we have to be able to get that little tab inside of that little tab. There we go. 
Awesome. See a little shred of metal sticking out of there. I'm not sure what that is. Let's lift that up. It's the little tab from the washer. So I had a, a lock ring on the nut that was on there. Keeping the nut from spinning. Anyway, let's go throw that back on. Let's go make sure there's no other cleaning we need to do. I sprayed some oil on the lever so it does not bind these. Seems pretty good. Let me go up uh, hit the um, magnets with a little bit of sandpaper. It looks like something kind of went around and chewed on it a little, just where it's been parked forever. And then definitely there's a, uh, a stalled spot where it was touching. Looks like that bottom coil. Yeah, it looks to be the worst of it right there. Let's go give it a little. Actually, I should hit it on the emery instead. Things it doesn't hit, the corrosion doesn't really hurt too much. You know, if the magnet loses its magneticity, yeah, then that's an issue. But the prettiness is not that important. Now, I'm gonna go clean that up. We'll put that on, and we're probably gonna be able. To, I should be able to spin it with a drill with the center nut. And we'll see if we have spark. If not, we gotta go back in. Hopefully it doesn't have any, you know, bad coils and that kind of thing. It's all glued on there pretty good. Not sure I'll be able to capture this, but let's go see if we can get. All right, so a key is at like four o'clock. Our tab is straight up and down. I would think I would probably get the tab because it's spring loaded out. I'm able to catch that first. get a light right in there and see if I can see where the little jaws are. Should be it right about there. I can tweak it from the bottom. There's my key. That's in the key. And I believe we're in the point gap. Let's go see if those points are closed. I'm sure at some point it's going to have a timing mark where they open up. Still closed. And open. You would think there'd be like a, a line somewhere. Let's um. She's a little growly still. Maybe because it's just not in all the way. I'm gonna run the nut on it. We gotta listen to see if it's growly or not. Right now it's dragging, but I think this flywheel has to go in about another good three eighths of an inch. I'm looking all over where's the nut. I'm like minutes. I'm looking around. I got the flashlight. I'm looking around the bench and everything. <laughs> Sometimes life gets you. Put a little bit of grease on the threads too, just to kind of help them out. There it goes. I think I had to set the key. Let's go. Go feel it. <laughs> All right. Let's grab the plug wire, throw the plug in it. We'll set that socket up on a drill, maybe. You no know, plug in it. We should be able to get enough RPMs out of it to see if we get any spark. Actually, see if we can just um, maybe spin it by hand and we'll get enough out of it. And that'll light me up. Oh, yeah. That's showing up for you guys? Excellent. I still want to put a drill on it. Uh, maybe we can possibly get a compression test out of it before putting all the pull start and everything back on it. Yeah, let's go see, um, get an adapter for that. Actually, before we spin it, that carburetor, the uh, throttle is stuck closed, which is okay. But let's get the, blow the crap out of it. Maybe we can take, maybe we'll get like a, can we push the guy? It's got to breathe. 
There it goes. Let's stay. Yeah. Gives us a wide open shot. Some air can come in while we're trying to spin it over. I think we got to set up. Go for lower speed. Flopped it up there. Let's um, go grab the compression tester and see if we get a, any kind of numbers out of it. Got a pair of vice grips in the corner. Just trying to help hold it because it's probably going to kick pretty good. Let's see if we get anything out of it. Yes. Nothing. It feels like it's got more than that though. Give me the gauge setup. Let's try it. Pretty low. Let's um dribble a little bit of oil in it. I think we already did that to begin with though, didn't we? Just to help it. Let's go throw a little bit of oil in it. We'll spin it again and see what we get. Yeah, I don't know what kind of compression you would have got back then. Shooting blanks. There we go. Let's let that spin a little bit. Spark plug sparking away. Let's go throw our checker back in again. What's your thoughts? I'm going to say it's going to come up like 10 pounds. Just bleed it off first. Showing like 20 pounds. That ain't good. Let's do a um a handheld. I'm not sure. What they have is a handheld, which is a, a gauge directly out of the head, and it's got like a rubber tape on it. I'll show you. One of these. This has got a little nipple on the end. If you just you hold it right down in there, get rid of all the the pieces that were in there. Because I had to use an adapter to go to that fatter spark plug. Different from the normal setup. All right. No. I can't even push it. Let's um. It actually doesn't feel too, too bad. Let's throw the plug in it. Let's see if it'll chug over with the drill with the plug in it. I guess what I'm trying to say is it, it, it kind of feels normal. I don't think the drill's gonna do it for us. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's the drill on low, not on high. Let's um work on that pull start and try to resuscitate that. That was kind of bogging and locking up on us. We could put the, the cone back on it and um, maybe we'll dribble a little bit of fuel down in it. See what we get. Sometimes I like a little oil port in it. It's on the other side of this that is where the issue is. Actually, I feel like Pretty comfortable that we don't need to get back in here. You know, crank seals possibly. But I'm gonna go clean some stuff up like we fought getting the cover apart. So I'm gonna go take a wire wheel, clean up these dowel pins, those edges, and we'll get that other cover back on. Kind of need it for the pull start anyway. just blowing it out with the compressed air and shooting oil in behind it. it seems like it's doing what it should. Just gonna throw that plug in there. Problem is this thing's flopping around now too so it's gonna want to dance on it. Ah, 
pretty good. You know what we can do? We can look in the exhaust port. Go we'll take a look at the rings. <laughs> Muffler's off of it. Should be able to see right in. You got three rings. The bottom normally is like an oil ring. It may still be, but a little beat up on the, the bore. I don't know if the light's too much for you or not. It always looks good on camera on the screen I'm looking at, and then later on when I'm editing, it's all whited out. But rally on that bottom end, though. Should be roller bearings, I think, on this. Let's, um, I gotta figure out where, maybe, could I should have bolted down in its original location? Maybe that might be best, right? And we'll go clean some of that crap out of there and I'll shove that motor over there and then we can kind of give a good tug on it without trying to rip out of the hole. We'll just throw like two nuts on it. Oh, the jokes. That doesn't want to dance around. Let's go see how this is going to be. I have a feeling it's going to be one of the ones that rip right out of your hands. Let's go get a little bit of fuel, dribble it down the plug hole, throw the plug in, give it a yank, see what it does. I'm expecting this to hurt. <laughs> the oil may foul it out, I'm not sure. So it may take a little bit for it to clear itself. Yeah, if it's just a giggles, just throw a little bit in the bottom. That should go into the crank. Maybe it'll run off and maybe it won't. But just so there's a little something. Ah, that'll make a good fireball. You ready? Oh, my back's not. Let's go see what that is. He smoked. We'll pull the plug out, see if it's, it might have fouled itself. It did do a puff of smoke though. I know we gotta do that carburetor. That is, yeah, I think it might be. What happens when it moves foul, it, it, it um, makes a wet line going across and or down the center of it. I put my glasses on. Yeah, I'm gonna go clean that out with carb clean and uh, we'll try it again. It's not like it's gonna run for 30 seconds or anything. If it runs, it, it just do, you know, a couple of fires and that's it. Again, the carb is uh, wide open, so there's no restriction there. <laughs> awesome. Loud, huh? There she lives. She wants to live. Awesome. That means we're good as far as the internals. We could have crank seal issues, but still, it does run. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Getting there. She lives. All right, guys, with that, I think we're going to go break it up a little bit. I've been getting a lot of complaints about the videos getting longer and longer and longer. I apologize, but I like making long videos. But anyway, let's go break this one up. Well, not positive this engine is going to stay in this machine. I'm going to try if we hit a roadblock where there's something, you know, if the track's gone and it's, you know, I'm not spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on different parts for it, but I wouldn't mind trying to get it 
you know, operational. If not, there's another cooler project than this that an engine would be perfect for. But that's for another day. All right, guys, with that, thanks for hanging out with me, doing a bit of wrenching, dragging old junk out of the woods and trying to resuscitate it. Until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye. Come on, we gotta do it one more time. <laughs> I'm glad the pull starts. It, I thought it was going to be really hard to pull over, but I think that was just all the oil up and around the jug. Apparently, compression's good too. Ready? Get it. Did you say it was 10 horsepower? Yeah. Yeah. Together. Yeah, yeah. right there. I don't know if it's in there now or not. A little paperwork? Yeah. It's still in one piece. <laughs> I don't know. A little dry roddy. There's another. Another key? Key, yeah. Awesome. Looks pretty complete, which is good. Wow.